good morning or good afternoon, good evening or wherever you are. So today I'm Bjorn and I'm going to talk a little bit about Phoenix or at least a little bit part of some functionality within. So uh, it's our restoration suite lines of uh, products. And um, hey, I might just little kick off. So I'm going to just start the application and log in. So uh, what I'm thinking of talking a little bit today is particularly one of our DVOs, uh, which is DVO dry clean. I will also uh, talk a little bit of some functionality from within the router and uh, some of the map tools that can come in very handy when working with restoration. Um, um, so uh, might as well start looking at something. So I will open up a project more or less and um, just gonna go and uh, import um, some uh, material into it. So looking on this material, which is happens to be 4K, um, we can guess that the uh, issue we're gonna look into today is gonna be dry clean. Um, so dry clean uh, is pretty good in removing issues uh, with it, but I will talk today a little bit more uh, just then just to add it, uh, actually what the different parts of it actually does. So first we do is just then to hammer uh, the timeline with the dry clean and as I do that you can see uh, most of this garbage goes away, there are some speckles left, but but this kind of materials that is more or less what to expect. So looking on the tool itself, uh, uh, you have some different parts uh, of, of this in here. And if, if you look then, um, we have something called detect. This is the one that sort of finds uh, the dust speckles more or less. Uh, then processing that could uh, help it to hide it or uh, whatever you need into it. And then we have safety, things that uh, try to avoid us uh, processing the picture. Um, looking then at, uh, in the detection, uh, we have something called uh, advanced analysis. So what that one does is actually, it, if it finds a dust speckle, uh, or something, uh, it will kind of uh, take that and um, process it. And with the advanced analysis, will wherever it finds some kind of uh, damage, it will sort of look around it to see if, if there's some thread or something that it can build upon to find more of it. So if I lower this to zero, it will more or less just find the accurate uh, places within and you see uh, it doesn't find uh, Fast a lot, uh, but uh, not everything is sort of managed in there. So, uh, and if I go the opposite way, uh, it will of course then start finding uh, a tad more, leaving just some dust, dust speckles uh, behind. Um, why they're not processed? Well, uh, it might have found it, but there are always risks in removing things. So, um, so if the dust on the next frame, etc., cetera, uh, it might consider it a bird or here you have some kind of sharp line uh, that, that kind of tells it not to process. But as you see, uh, it kind of spreads it uh, quite a bit. Um, also, we have, uh, now we're moving on into processing. So we have aggressiveness. So the higher aggressive, the more aggressive it will be and the lower less, but it also uh, combines uh, safety and risk management in terms of if, okay, if, if I remove this dust buckle, are there any kind of 
issues can I sort of um, destroy something I shouldn't so so if I lower this one you will see uh, it will leave a little bit uh, more because it's um, it's a bit more unsafe uh, more risky to process this area and going the opposite way uh, you can see it kind of goes um, the other way around and takes out a little bit more um, so, so looking on this, so uh, part of the, uh, I might as well show you here while I'm at this point is something we call smoothness. Um, and that is, okay, I removed a speckle, but if you do that very sharp, you can get some kind of edge or something, uh, but we try to make it kind of soft. So I zoom in here to uh, one of the dust speckles and smoothness is set there. So if I increase smoothness, you will see uh, the edges of these become a bit softer. And if I go the opposite, going to zero, you can see they become a bit sharper. I hope you can see this through uh, this webinar or not, but that's what it does anyway. So uh, smoother and sharper, smoother and sharper. Well, something like that anyway. So, so that was a small, uh, uh, the smoothest us anyway so um so now well we did this uh and as you see there are still some uh dust speckles and yeah as you saw earlier this is a bit extreme material um so what we can look uh is actually uh to turn on super aggressive um just as it is it's make it, it more aggressive. So turning that one on, you will see it kind of picks up the rest. Um, what the super aggressiveness does is more or less uh, lowering uh, the risk threshold, the uh, safety threshold a bit more. So you actually have a chance uh, to kind of uh, get more things. But with that uh, said, it's also uh, open up the risk for false positives. Um, so, um, covered most of these. One more thing is the strength. Um, as you see, it goes between two and zero. Um, so what, what the strength is, is sort of considering uh, what's the threshold of the dust. And strength one, is the threshold um, uh, on the level of the amplitude of the grain itself. So in this case, so if you look on this um, processing, so at one, it should be more or less at uh, the highest amplitude of the grain. Uh, if I look on compare modes, uh, we have got plenty of them, but in this case, I will just uh, use the red and compare where's the source so we can see what the drug uh, dry cleaning actually did for us. And we can see it did plenty. Um, so if you look up here in, in one of the corners, we can see they are a little bit less and, and we can toggle on and off. We can see definitely uh, up here that you have uh, some dust speckles. Then we have things like, okay, yeah, that's probably something because it's a line, so there's probably some damage. Uh, but there are some that is okay, uh, maybe, maybe not. Like this, this actually could have been like a very high amplitude grain of some kind. So what I can do is um, uh, easily seen if I do this in different thread mode um, and enable the red. And if I lower the strength uh, in this case, uh, you will see that uh, it will start to process more definite uh, damages rather than uh, on the edge. But of course, it might also affect uh, some of the processing uh, on this very damaged material. And going the other way, uh, what it actually does, if I increase it uh, a bit more, you will see it will kind of paint the image red in this case. So that doesn't help us seeing, but we can actually look here in this gray area 
and toggle on and off. Uh, well, but you, I don't sure if you can see the, the grain structure through the webinar, but you can see it actually soften, uh, well, not soften, but at least lower uh, the amplitude of the grain. You can see it if I put out this vector scope here. And um, so you actually ha can use that, uh, this tool um, as a grain management tool also, if you have extreme uh, grains or extreme noise, for instance, like um, extremely noisy negatives, or uh, perhaps like uh, night vision cameras or something, uh, then this one can work uh, really good. Um, so um, now removing things, grain and everything and so on. So what about safety? So if you look on this one, uh, you saw that I loaded from an EDL. So, uh, so this one uh, can, can't see that this is a start because it expects me to have handles. And actually, I have a handles here. But in order to see, um, uh, uh, this, I need to um, um, tell it uh, to uh, ha that this, this edge is a scene cut. It's also a new functionality. Some of you might have seen or not seen it, but I can force this one uh, to let the tool know that this is a scene cut. Uh, so it will, wouldn't expect handles. So if we look now on the tool, and uh, we can see the cut safety. Uh, so it does enabled, and we have a threshold of it as well. Uh, if I paint it red, this one, um, lowering the threshold will increase it slightly. You will remove slightly more. And of course, going the opposite way uh, will not process as much, just the things it's extremely certain of that it can process without interfering with anything. Um, another way we can work it is, well, I don't care about uh, safety. I just want to process my, my start and end of clip so I can disable that one. So of course, then it will sort of process a little bit more uh, and make something. Uh, which is that one and or if you're really really careful about your splices you really want to do it all by hand uh, there's also of course the ability to make uh, processing in bypass mode on the first frame so first or last frame so then it's uh, uh, it will then uh, don't we won't process the first or last frame then so it will leave this one for manual kind of uh, uh, stuff. Uh, but let's have it on. Um, so um, that being said, uh, we have a very aggressive setting. So there actually might be some issues with it, um, um, with it removing things it shouldn't. Uh, false positive, we say it. Uh, so if I move this one, we can definitely see up here, for instance. So uh, if you look more closely here, it actually takes away a little bit of that, uh, that piece. So what to do? Well, um, the saving thing is here is matte paint. And with matte paint, uh, all you need to do is then to take a brush and paint back whatever uh, it failed. And, um, and then just go to the next frame and make sure that it's sort of fixed and so on. So, so even though I work with really aggressive, well, there are some scratches here. I could remove this with a scratch uh, target, but in this today we're talking about dry clean. So I'll leave that to another session. Um, so, so that, that's pretty good. And uh, looking with different thread, uh, it, it's kind of easy to see where it goes wrong. And here we can see that that's a larger one. So maybe I just take a rectangle to paint that back, uh, wherever, whatever that one is and so on. So 
I can use that. And of course, uh, then in the end, I need to address these kind of uh, things uh, with a manual tool. So either with fix or clone color or whatever. So um, then again, uh, let's have a look at that something uh, at, at some other point. Well, so that was the cut safety and uh, also looking a little bit of what to do when you get false positives or uh, artifacts uh, of processing. Um, next, uh, if we look into the next clip I got, uh, this is slightly smaller, so I'm going to just look at it and uh, we can see in this case there are a few issues here and um, looking on this one, for instance, we can see that this white speckle is actually a, a bit more cyan or blue or something. So um, adding down the dry clean, uh, you can see it picks up a bit and but as the as it's colored uh, in this case, sometimes you can try to use the RGB to look for damage in, in the red, green, and blue uh, channels rather than black and white, even though this is a black, white uh, uh, newsreel, uh, it's still being uh, scanned with a, with, with, with a traditional scanner, not a black and white scanner. So it, it picked up that this was some kind of colors in there. Uh, maybe or some glue residue or something. I, I don't know what it was. Um, but now looking on this one, we can see something strange happen here. And this doesn't look okay. So if we look on the source, it actually looks like this. And what it is, is a camera flash. Um, I think with dry clean, we don't care how big a damage is. We really try to repair it. In this case, we didn't do very well because we picked up part of it. Um, but if you're working with newsreel or FX shots or something, we do have uh, something called flash protection. So if I enable that one, uh, it finds that. And uh, of course, uh, it won't process camera flashes or um, some, some kind of uh, VFX or something that uh, could call cause these kind of things. Um, so looking now um, here, we now have one more safety to go and it's the temporary safety. And that is something when something suddenly appears uh, like a head popping over a shoulder or something, you don't really want that to go or something um, that, that appears suddenly or something uh, that actually isn't dust, which also appears suddenly and then it goes again. So, so in this case, uh, we're gonna look into something completely different. So we have this little shot here. And well, there's a big blob on her nose, but in her hand, she has some kind of glass thing. And you can see uh, that it is shining bright for one frame. So what's the difference is between that blob on the nose or, or, uh, or that it just shines, it's uh, kind of different. So if I add dry clean to this, uh, we can see it's something happening in here. Uh, and if we paint it red, we can see, yes, there, there is something going on there. Um, so if we look now in the safety, we have quite low safety, but uh, in this case by default, uh, but uh, lowering it more, uh, you can see it starts to eat up the uh, diamond or piece of glass or whatever it is. And of course, uh, going the other way, uh, we can see that it um, becomes whole. Uh, so it's, you can't really see any difference. So, 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 so that's cool. So that's uh, what the temporal safety can do uh, to preserve if you have shots uh, that have these kind of things. So defaults of the dry clean is usually very okay, but sometimes if you have uh, different shots, um, it can be useful to know what this different parameter actually does. Um, keep looking on this one. Uh, we have something else. And 
uh, let me see if I can spot it. So like you see here, there's some softness go on and actually that is uh, because there was a big blob and uh, no problem with writing to remove it. But in this case, this is a very grainy uh, kind of shot. So it becomes a bit soft. Um, so uh, we really want to put some grains on that place in order to sort of conceal that we conceal the damaged. So to do that, uh, we can use um, the... Um, um, the uh, uh, regrain. In this case, we're going to use the regrained RGB. And what that one does will just put grain. Uh, but adding grains on everything is not really what we want. Uh, we want something like um, uh, we want it to find the places. Uh, uh, where the damage been. So just as I can compare with source, I want to do the same thing in the processing. So of course we can do that. Um, and what we do call it then is uh, a difference. Uh, so that, what's the difference? And same thing you can do here is creating a mat made out of the difference of what has happened. And in this case, we want to know what's the difference from now and actually, what did the dry clean make for difference? So, so in this case, we ask it, okay, uh, not the previous one, but something that happened before the dry clean. So in this case, what happened from base on, up until now? What's the difference? And I can make a mat out of it. So I can make a Luma mat. So I can actually use it in processing, just like you take in an external mat or something. So if I make a show, you can see actually leaves so this is what uh, is new uh, and and it was a no nose this was a nose job happening um, and if i increase the scale it it will be more aggressive and uh, you will kind of uh, be able to um, spot uh, spot it more easily uh, and, and and creating a stronger mat if you increase the amplitude of this um, there are also um, other tools you can help using with the mat. Since you now have a mat, you can now work with the mat tools. So I can sort of like despeckle it to remove the tiny ones. Uh, I can grow it to make it a bigger one and, uh, uh, and so on. Uh, so, so whatever uh, um, things needed, uh, uh, I can use in here to do this. So once I'm happy with this map of mine, uh, I can then go in and uh, start um, start looking on. Um, uh, let's just turn off the key. So now now I can start looking on to adding grain into this one. So uh, enable it and push the grain and of course now I got the grains where I want them not like I want them but where I want them so uh, so now it's a matter of matching uh, your grains and easy way to do that because you set it in red green blue so uh, so as they are different in the red green blue channel because that's the nature of film uh, so why don't we do this in channel mode so in in this case I'm gonna shift to the blue channel so now we look into the blue channel uh, of the film or in or the blue layer as it is now as it's digital um, and we can now see uh, that this doesn't really match so what i need to do is increase the size here on the blue channel and maybe the amplitude of it as well or sharpness uh, something like that. And then I have something that kind of matches uh, the blue channel. So then I just swap over, uh, go to the green channel. Well, uh, just keep doing it until you get something that looks pretty decent. Um, yeah, that, that will probably do a bit. 
yeah all right and finally you do uh your red shadow and just repeat as whatever was and uh, also tad much so uh, and once you have that you just go back to your rgb and you got something that looks pretty good and if i uh disable it you can quickly notice uh the difference so so you have a lot of things in the map tools map difference that makes a difference um now something else is uh sometimes i heard request upon okay uh something happened down the line uh so uh, i want to paint back something from my source or maybe from a layer or something so uh, i'm not going to show you how you can uh, use the matte paint to actually paint back from any position of your stack um, starting this uh, i will just have a look at this one and we do have uh, something that we recognize but and to visualize this a little bit easier, uh, I will use colors. Uh, and very basic color, uh, I will just use uh, a printer, a printer light. So I start with having my input. And in my input effects, I paint everything a bit blue. So you know that is the input effects. And then I can uh, add another print delight uh, as an um, FX layer and make that one perhaps uh, green. I'll take back the blue one and make it all be nice and green like a summer day. And then we can just add another one uh, and make it a tad red, something like that. So, so now we have something and we, we have uh, various effects. Now, now in this case, it's colors, but in this other cases, it could have been stabilization. It could be in, uh, dust, it could be uh, DVO scratches or whatever. So, so in this case, you can sort of recover from anywhere in the stack. And how to do that is uh, use a tool that doesn't do anything. Um, it could be print the light or uh, or it could be um, let's just pick the blur effect so in this case i create something called the blur uh, but as it's set for zero or one in this case it wouldn't do nothing so uh, we're cool to use it because uh, we don't really want the blur to do anything so all i'm gonna do is now to rename that and call it reveal source so um, how to make this one reveal source well it's a matter of using the matte paint um, so i have to tell it to use source input source and of course everything becomes source so uh, what i need to do is of course invert uh, this one so now when i'm in this mood I can start painting back the, the source in this case. So, uh, or I make a nice rectangle of, of the source. So now, now I'm actually, what I'm doing is with this one, I'm actually going in before the print light. I'm actually looking on the input effects before the input effects, the source, the actual source in this case where I'm painting it. So going back here, um, as I already did this one now, I can quickly go to my memories and notes and store. So now I have this revealed source. So if we would do something else, it's already preset up. So I, uh, instead of redoing everything, uh, I will append it once, twice. Um, so now I have uh, three ones that actually 
reveal source. But if I tell this one um, to become uh, input fx. So, so then it's just for this one to say uh, source input input effects. And now if I do something, it will bring back that nice blue uh, thing we had uh, out of the input effects or stability or whatever it was that you might have had there. Um, and as, as well here, I have uh, in this case, I had another FX layer, uh, the nice green one. So if I make this one green and select in this case, not uh, in, in put source, but the first print light. Uh, so now I can go back and pick the data out of that layer and make it nice and green, etc. So, uh, so that's also a very useful thing that you can do uh, with the matte paint. Um, so another thing that is, can be used for is actually uh, use that as a um, compositing painter, which means that, for instance, if you have um, run your clip through Loki and, and you get uh, some material goes through QC and, 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 and you get the flaw, something happened. Um, like uh, the flash uh, detection on this clip wasn't working, so uh, you have to redo it. Uh, but rather than redo it, you can actually bring it in into um, Phoenix and fix that frame using matte paint or, or, or any other way you want to do it. But um, so let me show you how that's done. Uh, so we'll just, for this case, I will then uh, export this little clip and go to my library, export media, put it on some good place, make it a progress, what did you high Q and call it nice job Bjorn uh, and export it. And it's very far that we got it. Yes, it's been exported. So now I can go over here and import this clip in again. Uh, nice job, Bjorn. That's the thing we need. So now we have uh, this clip on the timeline. And we see that's kind of sepia, maybe not that what we wanted, and there are some strange things happening in there. So, uh, so at some places, uh, you might want to fix something. Maybe there's some static uh, thing that's wrong or something. So uh, what we want to do uh, is actually to be able to bring back things from the original source. So to do that, uh, I'm just going to add another timeline, um, which I do somewhere. Yeah, there it is. Going to move this one up a bit. Pop. And go to my library and bring in the source material. So now uh, you can see below this one, I have the source. So sometimes um, it could be something static like a, a flagpole or something that um, scratch target for some stupid reason removed. Um, but in this case, uh, let's just do some something. So say for instance, we want to want this head to uh, come back. So we got a blur, so let's use the blur. Um, and in this case, uh, just let's make a little shape around him and track this one backwards. 
So um, we got this head covered. Maybe do an inner softness. And for this to work, uh, I need to invert the shape. Um, and to make this work, uh, to sort of reveal back his head, uh, I need to tell this one to uh, alpha output uh, this layer so it will create a mat or uh, an alpha layer out of this. And then I need, of course, to uh, add a compositing effect. And as I do that, you can see uh, that this shape cuts through and uh, brings it down to the, the other uh, one. So now, now, now his head is good. Um, there are, are a couple of other issues that we might want to act upon. So like uh, there was some nice little green stuff here. So, but as we already set up this uh, tool, uh, we can use the matte paint to do the same thing. So in this case, uh, I can then um, kind of use this one for a single frame, uh, paint back the original one. So uh, wherever it would be needed that I did paint back something for a single frame. Um, and not to forget um, is that Sometimes it's, uh, if it's just one frame, uh, the very easiest way to, to get it is because you put this one in, is actually just to um, cut your timeline. Go for, oops, sorry, oh, now I watch I'm all the way. Go forward one frame, uh, like this, cut it, and then uh, you kind of need to delete it. And uh, as we always see things from the top, um, we can then quite easily just get that one and, and you get your fix really quickly done as well. So, uh, so sometimes it's, you don't really need any kind of composite thing, but just do the easy thing is just to, well, Let's redo that frame by deleting it and use the original one again. Um, so that's what I thought of looking into today. And um, just to recap uh, quickly, we can have a quick check what I actually did today, uh, just due to my uh, reporting what's been done. Uh, so if I just put it uh, here. Bjorn did a great job. That's a perfect uh, export for a... So then uh, we can then see if I find my... Oh no, that's the one we want. Sorry, I just took up that one, which was not wanted, but uh, we get this, what's been done uh, in the report function. So, um, so how to clean up and set up all the settings for it. And um, that I did a couple of paint strokes and so on. And uh, what's the neck clean was, and that I did would use the dry clean and uh, and uh, here we did some layer out to use the dry clean, use matte tools and re regreen RGB and different mats uh, in order to uh, reuse the regrain on whatever the dry clean did. And then we went through this uh, different matte paints with the uh, different uh, things to paint it back. And uh, here we did our uh, small uh, compositing and stuff like that with shapes to reveal his head and other stuff. So, um, and um, that's a bit about what I was talking about today. And unless we have any questions, uh, I would like to say thanks for, for today. Ah, I got a questions about DVO pixel. Um, 
Probably can. Uh, let's make a quick one about that. And uh, let me see. Um, so uh, let's find some stuff for it. Uh, and we need to have um, So this is short, which has plenty of issues with it. Uh, but let's just start by fixing it slightly. And um, So, uh, these shots has plenty of dead pixels, if you can find them, which is not very easy to do normally. Uh, so we we'll happily have some tools for it. So, uh, if we find the pixel tool, uh, we can see it finds some. Uh, so, uh, for it to find something, uh, it uses these kind of uh, parameters. And to show you it actually has been something there, I will just go to, here you can see that it actually has some kind of uh, pixels and stuff. So. Um, and sometimes it could be a bit hard to set it up, but normally it should sort of find where it is. Uh, and if we, let me see if we can uh, draw the pixels. Yes, so we can see now, uh, actually paints them up how they look. Uh, and the sensitivity is sort of uh, the threshold to find them. Um, and also, as you see, I divided all these clips because uh, the pixels needs to be uh, per shot uh, because you never know if the pixels move from one uh, shot to another because uh, that pixel can move even within the camera. Uh, so, so that's why you could do this kind of stuff. Um, and uh, as we found this, uh, it can find more or less. So. Uh, if I increase the sensitivity, uh, if I'm unlucky, it will kind of uh, find even more. Uh, and actually it did find uh, one more, or if I lessen it, uh, it might not even uh, find any. So it's a matter, first of all, try to uh, find a threshold uh, where it kind of finds the amount of it. Uh, so if we look on uh, and uh, on these, then we see all these pixels uh, that have plenty more. So uh, so what it does is local plus. If it go down to zero here, maybe uh, well, it didn't happen much on that. Well, yeah, it did. Uh, you can see it didn't really expand this one, uh, but local plus is looking on if it finds something the least of that pixel, but local plus will then uh, kind of uh, increase uh, the hits until it finds suspicious uh, 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 pixels that might be, should be included. And you can see that there are different uh, colors in here. So white means it should process, the, the pixels exist in all uh, channels. This one is red, so it consists in the red channel uh only and cyan is i guess red and 
uh, could it be red and blue maybe or, well a combo <laughs> more or less um, and uh, so, so that's what it does um, then you have um, the safety oh my god here here we go a long time I consider it but uh, it's it's sort of okay um, uh, a stationary kind of uh, safety could be if you have a static object that just sits there and uh, so it, it should try to avoid that I mean it could be a logo or something and uh, and a spatial safety is something that okay uh, just on, on this kind of frame that it sort of uh, should worry uh, and let me see if it does something I will remove something in there and it might actually change the color of some of these uh, as well um, I don't know if I reset it yeah so, so it's a little bit um, then you have the ability uh, to paint your own pixels and that was not the one I wanted uh, that was exclude area uh, so and depending on uh, so, so with alt and draw the mouse you can make uh, like an exclude area or something so if I don't want it to process uh, the Luxor uh, sign or something I can exclude this area uh, Maybe it was just, yeah, so holding down shift, I can sort of draw my own uh, uh, dead pixel pixel. Ah, so yeah, so if you have things that flickers or something, what you can then do uh, is actually paint the pixel manually if you find it uh, yourself. But um, these kind of stuff with the sensitivity and global stuff playing with the safety uh, sometimes it, it will uh, it will find it and uh, yeah and also uh, so uh, then you might be able to just paint that pixel and stuff so um, uh, Yeah, so that's a little bit about the pixel um, tool anyway. So, um, so I don't know if they're good enough or do you want to? Um, anyway, so what we also can do because I it's my first webinar but I mean we can do have special session uh, about about them uh, and if you you want to go into depth with another tool or two or uh, even if you have material you want to share and uh, okay how to act upon that uh, uh, you would be happy to let us know uh, and uh, maybe make a suggestion for a webinar and uh, we can do that as well um, so um, and uh, with that I think um, might as well call it the day night morning or <laughs> wherever you are <laughs> so and um, yeah so but please, please uh, feel free to contact us and we will um, of course, uh, look into your request and hopefully we can do a webinar of something that, that you are burning for. Alrighty. Okay. Over and out. Thank you.